तो Hello everybody, welcome back to more Resident Evil 4. Oh boy. I'm actually leaving today. I'm not going to be able to record for a little bit. How do you know? Um, because I am leaving today. Oh, okay. But we thought we'd get a little more session in of this game before I leave, so. <coughs> yeah. So what did you think of the Street Fighter 2 uh, classic cartoon? It's alright. It's really funny. Are right, you ready for something new? Uh, sure. All right. What do you gotta What do you gotta show me? This. Well, this isn't gonna be new to me. He's a uh, He's a little under the weather. He still has eyeballs though. Oh uh, yeah, he does, sir. Sir, you okay, sir? Sir. Sir. Mister. <laughs> Wrong game. <coughs> You know, that kind of reminds me of the... Have you ever seen the anime Parasite, The Maxim? Uh, no. It's really good. It's like, okay, so... The whole premise of the story is these parasites just kind of... They're basically aliens, not parasites, but they are parasites. They fell from space. And they've been embedding themselves into humans, taking over their brains. And, uh... Some of them are trying to live life amongst humans. Some of them are just trying to get rid of the humans. Well, some, a, a couple instances, the parasite wasn't able to get to the brain, so it had to take over whatever part of the body. Shinji, uh, the main character of the of the anime, uh, the parasite dug into his arm, and, uh, and now his parasite is the arm, so now he can have a conversation with his arm, all that stuff, you know, it's just a living parasite that can talk and everything, named Amigi. And, well, you know how they have blades sticking out of their head in this game? That's basically the entire anime. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, like, don't quote me, okay? Because I'm not, I'm, I'm just making a speculation, really. You got it. I believe that Parasite: The Maxim was based off these guys here in Resident Evil Four. Oh, okay. Because looking back on it, it seems very likely. You should watch it though. It's on a Hulu. Oh, okay. It's very gory. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the tick. That's a good thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, climb down. Yeah. Jesus. That's what I learned in special forces, right there. <laughs> Goodbye. Hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Farewell. So. There is a news article I want to talk about Mr. T. <laughs> oh, yeah? Are you down to listen? I guess. So. Down to play video games, so do whatever the freak you want to do. The title of this article is Mr. T's own mother referred to him as Mr. T. Okay. Mr. T is one of those names that is just impossible to forget, partly because it's only three letters in a syllable long, in syllables long, mm -hmm. but mostly because it's owned by a man who, for a brief period in the 80s, communicated solely through smack talk and haymakers, which he happily used if you didn't refer to him as Mr. T. Seems pretty accurate so far, right? Yeah. As you may or may not know, prior to boiling his, uh, his name down to the three most iconic letters in pop culture... History, Mr. Uh, dot T, mm -hmm. was known to the world as Lawrence uh, Truid? Torid? Tarud? Yeah. One of the two. Three, four. I said it four times. So it's a Which is still pr a pretty fucking cool name. But nowhere near as testicle shattering as badass, at, uh, badass as Mr. Fucking T. However, as cool as, it, as this name was. Or as cool as it, there was a typo. As cool as it, this name was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. T became increasingly frustrated with white racist assholes referring to him as a dismissive or disres in a dismissive or disrespectful manner, 
which is kind of hilarious when you realize that Mr. T worked as a bouncer in the early 80s, which involved him doing things like, like throwing people through windows and just throwing them out of the way and everything and shit like that. There's a picture, black and white picture of him <laughs> just chunking this guy mm-hmm. on a daily basis, and people still to try it decided to try to give him shit for I being black. I solved the puzzle. Okay. By refusing to call him by his first name. That picture... Uh, you're in, oh, so I'm going to post put the picture up right now. Yeah. Which means i got to save it. Download image. Okay, oh, there we go. That picture, by the way, is still from a short-lived TV show called America's Toughest Bouncer, which Mr. T won after hurling a man through a solid wooden door while wearing a pristine white suit and knocking out a 300-pound man in a boxing match in under a minute. <laughs> no. Mr. T come. is Mr. T is a freaking man, if I've ever seen one. <clears throat> yeah. A feat which eventually led him to being cast as Clubber Lang in the Rocky movies. Oh, yeah. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. When fir- I shot that man in when the When he knees. first started out as a bouncer after leaving the military in the 70s, Mr. T, who was still going by his original name at this point, didn't like how customers were get- weren't were giving him the amount of respect he felt he deserved for a man with arms as large as his. I did it. So he, fu- he decided to legally change his name to Mr. T. Mr. T's legal documented name is Mr. And that's his first name. The period is the middle name, and T is the last name. Cool story, bro. Why are you so dismissive right now? Because I'm playing video games, and I like video games. Right. Purely so that clients and customers and everyone else who you can would refer to him as Mr. whether they liked it or not. Mm. In 1984... In a 1984 interview with Jet Magazine, Mr. T expanded on his reasoning, explaining that he'd grown up seeing people after. Do you remember the insignia thing on the church door? Yeah, I gotta go. What are you saying? Put in the thing in the church door, and then I can go to church. Okay. You're in your own world. It's okay. I'm just. Okay. Making things clear of what our goal is. So. In a 1984 interview with Jet Magazine, Mr. T explained on this reasoning, explaining that he'd grown up seeing people refer to his father as boy per- purely because of his race and that he is disliked, that he disliked how as a black man. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, never mind. I misread that. He had to fight sometimes literally for his right to be referred in a way... God, I, I don't... I can't... Yeah. Follow. I'm trying so hard. Like, well, you don't this. have to. I'm also in the, uh, the article. Oh. Okay. He didn't find patronizing. Uh, all right. Literally fought for his right to be referred to in a way he didn't find patronizing. <laughs> so he changed his name as soon as he was able to, so everyone, regardless of who they were, would have to call him Mister. Hey. Saying that uh, yeah. if he was old enough to fight and die for this country, he was old enough to be treated like, like, or he was old enough to not be treated like shit by everyone he met. Hilariously, in the same interview, Mr. T also revealed that he was so stone dead serious about people referring to him as Mr. First and foremost that his mother had taken uh, to calling him Mr. T around the house. When you think about how awesome that is. Oh, well, there's this picture that's not showing up of him brushing his mohawk. But... Okay. All right. Did you well, brush a mohawk? I guess so. How does that work? Sounds cool. Thank you again, Fact Fiend, for Are you ready for another trivia. boss? Really? Already? Yeah. Was I really reading that much? Yeah. <laughs> We've been recording for eight minutes. I've been going places, man. You haven't been paying no attention. I guess not. That's why I had to share some information. An inside scoop, if you will. What? On the situation. Oh. Uh. That's good. A green herb? Oof. Oof. Just combine it with the other Oof. one. Oof. No. That's good. Yep. Oh, you're just going to discard the... I'm going to keep that fish. <laughs> you can't tell me. Get rid of it. You know, I wonder if it. there's a challenge to keep the largest... Blocked. thing. 
I wonder if there's a challenge to keep like the largest piece of inventory possible, like through the entire run, or just. What, what do you think some Resident Evil Four challenges are? I'd like to know. El Gigante. You want to know a hard challenge for a uh, 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 Resident Evil Five challenge? What? Beat the El Gigante without using the uh, the uh, car machine gun. Have you ever done it? No, because you can't. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a hard challenge, bro. Because you literally can't. Nobody's ever done it. <laughs> and They're the funny thing is, if you didn't have to use that gun, you could literally just pull out a rocket launcher and kill it in one shot. <laughs> really? Well, yeah. Because the freaking rocket launch launcher does like launcher. a million... <laughs> does like a million damage or something. Anyway, see you guys next time. Pause the game, pause the game, pause the game, pause the game, pause, pause the game. Pause the game? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Want him to give a good little cliff hanger. God dang it. Okay. Did you actually combine? Shut up. <laughs>